Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar about Combustion Analyzer. Today's webinar will consist of two parts. First, we will have a one hour session, uh, a technical training, how to use Combustion Analyzer, what are its features, how it can be used and how you can show it to the customers. And the second part will be more sales oriented to give you an idea what questions typically come up with customers, what are the benefits of Devasoft compared to other uh, competitors and who the competitors are. So without further ado, let's get started with the technical presentation. So we will first cover a basic theory of combustion analyzer, take a look at what is required to run it. Uh, then we'll switch over to Devasoft, where I will show you exactly how to use it yourself with the file replay option. And then we'll go over what are the requirements and uh, for the inputs what are some of the key features and what outputs are available in the module, and then how you can send data to other third-party systems and how you can combine it with other modules. So the main thing that is different with Combustion Analyzer is that uh, where everything else normally in Devasoft is acquired in time domain, Combustion Analyzer calculates and displays all the data in angle domain. So what Combustion Analyzer basically does is it uh, gets the data that is captured, so basically analog data that is captured in time domain, it recalculates it in the angle domain. So we can view all the results uh, from the engine in its crank position uh, domain. Uh, you can see there on the animation two different engines. So one is a two-stroke engine and the other one is a four-stroke engine. The main difference between them is that a two-stroke engine completes the whole engine cycle within one engine revolution, and the four-stroke engine completes one cycle in two engine revolutions. So the difference is then in the angle domain. The two-stroke engine has zero to 360 degree domain, or um, the area where we look at the results, and the four-stroke engine has a 720 degree angle domain in which results are displayed and calculated. Uh, and this is what Devasoft Combustion Analyzer, or what the basic function of Devasoft Combustion Analyzer is, to recalculate this into a user-friendly way of viewing the results and analyzing data cycle by cycle. So it is primarily used in cars, ships, airplanes, lawnmowers, so we are not limited uh, to the, the size of the engine. Uh, we are present from the smallest engine manufacturers to the biggest engine manufacturers in the world. Uh, the only limitation or the condition is that uh, the engine needs to be a linear uh, reciprocating piston engine. So uh, rotary engines or, uh, for example, turbine engines are not supported with this combustion analyzer. And what you need at the minimum for the combustion analyzer to run is one uh, angle sensor and one in-cylinder pressure sensor. So as you can see here, uh, we support different types of angle sensors. From the most basic ones is an encoder uh, that can be installed on the engine. Additionally, uh, you can of course use the already built-in gear tooth sensor with either double or with missing teeth. And one special thing here is that Devasoft actually supports many different types of gear tooth sensors. Um, usually. In the past, there were gear tooth sensors used that had a single gap or maybe multiple gaps that were evenly spaced between them. Uh, now, a lot of engines have uh, several gaps, five, six gaps that have asymmetric spacing between them. Uh, this means that even after two gaps, the ECU can exactly know at what position the engine is and it can synchronize and start faster. Uh, this makes it much more difficult to be used with uh, combustion analysis software. Uh, but we did uh, an update of this last year, and now all different types of gear tooth sensors with missing teeth are supported. So you can define any number of gaps, any number of teeth uh, in, in the gaps, and you can use OEM sensors directly without installing additional sensors. And of course, we support uh, CDM with zero pulse. So this is uh, one pulse signal uh, with a zero pulse, and we also support uh, Tahoe. Uh, Tahoe is something that 
is allowed and can be used, but it's not something that is recommended for accurate combustion analysis. For pressure sensors, we support direct charge inputs, uh, voltage sensor or current sensors. So we have our own uh, charge amplifiers on uh, serious uh, high dense, uh, sorry, standard serious or high speed serious slices. And additionally, you can of course connect CAN, CANFD, LIN, FlexRay, Modbus, so any kind of vehicle bus directly. You can of course measure voltage, current, connect uh, video, GPS for mobile measurements. So we are really not limited to how many channels can be connected together. Now we will switch over to Devasoft, where I will do a presentation of how the measurement can be done in Devasoft software. So normally uh, you would see a measurement either on a live engine or on this uh, small demo toy that we have here. Uh, but today, unfortunately for you, this is only a showcase uh, to show how a typical configuration looks like. We will actually do the measurement using file replay option in the software. Uh, and the file replay option in the software is something that's really convenient when you have to go to a customer or maybe show a measurement online to someone because you can do it uh, anywhere. You can always have the replay file with you and you can basically show all the functionality of Combustion Analyzer yourself or even train yourself uh, on using Combustion Analysis. Uh, so what we will basically do is we are not using real measurement, we are using simulation mode. This can be changed in options and settings of Devisoft. And here if you click on simulated devices, normally you would have uh, simulated channels available so that you can make a configuration of your hardware uh, that you would have connected later. Uh, I have here another option which is called file replay. Uh, this add-on is not included with the installation as standard but it is available on our website. So if we go uh, on Devisoft website on downloads and if you type in replay you can get here a file replay add-on. So you just download the file and uh, copy it into your add-ons folder. And with this, you can then use replay files. Together with this, uh, we also have a file replay export. So this is an export filter that you can create your own replay files. If you make a measurement on an engine or if you get some data from a customer, you can actually export that data to a replay file and then use it for simulation or measurement later on. Uh, but if you don't have any files, there is also one file included here at the bottom. So if you type in the search box replay, you get a filter of all these files that you can use. So down below at the end, you have the 60 minus two four stroke replay file and you can just unzip it and we will use this for our measurement. So once you copy the add-on and uh, restart Devisoft, you will have this file replay add-on available. And this will simulate the channels that you uh, exported from your data file. So you just load the file replay and you need to select the repeat option. So this means that it will just loop over the file once, once it's over. Since the complete file is less than four seconds, uh, we just replay it constantly as if we would have a continuously running engine. Now, when, when we go to analog inputs, we can see here nine channels. So these are the channels that we recorded on our engine and exported them to the replay file. So first I'll just enable all of the channels and we will immediately go to measure mode to see exactly what data we have here. Uh, I'll create nine uh, inputs and we can visualize them on the recorder. Uh, normally, if you did any kind of combustion, you would be, it would be easy to recognize that channels two to nine are some sort of cylinder pressures. And in the beginning, we have our angle sensor. Uh, so we can usually identify this from the shape of the signal. And this then helps us to configure a combustion analyzer. So in this case, uh, we know that this is a 60 minus four angle sensor and that we have a four stroke engine. This means that in one cycle, 
we will have two crank angle revolutions. And we have here an angle, a gear tooth sensor with missing teeth. So there are continuous pauses from each teeth and then we have a gap in between. We could also measure the gap in between and from this we could see that this uh, has two missing teeth. And we've, if we would count the rest of the signals, uh, there should be 58 pauses. So it's a 60, mi 60 minus two angle sensor. And then from one uh, peak pressure signal to the other, uh, we should have two continuations of this signal inside. So let's go back and just rename the inputs so that it's easier to configure everything. So the first one is the 60 minus two. Then we have the pressure signals, so we can just select all of them, rename them, they'll be uh, edited together. We can also select the physical quantity for the pressure sensors. Uh, we can also change scaling for all of them if we would need to, so we can just right click on the column uh, and also add our scale column so that we can edit all of them at once. So let's say the scaling is the same for all of them. We can just put it in. If you have chart sensors, uh, the sensitivity will be written on the box and then you have to input it for each sensor separately. Of course, you can always save your sensor. Uh, you can type in a new one or just make a new sensor uh, and then just select it from the list. So if you save it with a serial number and the actual scaling, you can then, then just select the sensor directly from the list. Now, once we have the analog inputs edited, we can add also the combustion engine analysis module. So this is included in the installation of Devasoft and it's available under machinery diagnostics. So the combustion uh, engine analyzer also needs a separate license which is not included in the standard package. And we have two uh, different options available, which we'll go over in the second presentation. Uh, but you need to have either a trial license or a combustion license to use it. So as you see here in the user interface, everything is split into three tabs. We have engine settings, encoder settings, and then result definition. So your outputs and immediately once you add the module, you also get the big error, red error message in the beginning. So we see that reference pressure is unassigned. Uh, you always have to fix all the errors for combustion analyzer to run. And there, there are two conditions, as I mentioned before. You need to have one pressure signal. So we assign the first pressure signal to cylinder number one. And then we go to encoder settings and we need to select our angle sensor. Uh, so you have already some encoders and some angle sensors already added as default. If your sensor is missing, you can always go to options and counter sensors and you can just create a new one. So we can create a new sensor. And we can say that this is a gear to it with missing teeth and we can then create a completely custom configuration. So uh, 74 minus three, then we have uh, 39 minus six. So you can really configure or create any kind of angle sensor and save it and you can then use it directly from the list. Uh, if your encoder is a digital type, then you will only be able to select counter inputs, so digital inputs. If your encoder is an analog type, then you'll only be able to select analog inputs. So once you create the sensor or edit the sensor, you also need to select if this is a analog or it's a digital type of an angle sensor. Okay, and immediately once we have valid inputs, you can see here a live preview of pressure volume diagram and the actual uh, pressure calculation. So we get a live preview and we can also see if everything is set up as it should be. So one thing that we can immediately see that is not okay is that the peak pressure in this case is at 100 degrees. So this means that uh, 
we have some offset and we need to do TDC detection. Uh, so this is to detect uh, when the piston is at its utmost position. We call this zero degrees. Uh, and we always measure the difference between the zero of the angle sensor and the top dead center of the piston. So this is our trigger offset. Uh, you can measure this either mechanically and input it manually, or you can use this function inside combustion analyzer uh, to measure this and do TDC detection. So we can also use TDC detection in combustion analyzer and actually measure what the offset is. The only condition is that the engine has to be without combustion uh, in the cylinder once you're, when you're doing actual TDC detection. So it needs to be in non-fired mode or uh, it needs to be just compression and expansion without combustion. In this case, since we have a replay from an actual uh, engine with combustion, we don't get completely correct offsets. So I can enter it manually and now you can see that peak pressure is at about 20 degrees after uh, TDC, which makes sense in this case. Uh, one thing that is also quite new in Devasoft is this TDC mode in measure. So you no longer have to be only in channel setup. When you do TDC detection, you can actually go to measurement and you get a new custom display created here in the CA group. And you have here TDC, you can select your uh, input and can immediately do the measurement uh, or TDC detection directly here. So uh, you no longer have to do it in channel setup, you can actually do it in measurement and this means that uh, you can have inputs from different slices used. Whereas before you need to, needed to have the angle sensor and the pressure sensor from, on, on the same slice. Now you can actually have it on different slices because they will always be synchronized in the measurement. <clears throat> so let's go to the overview. Uh, when we have valid inputs for combustion analysis, we get a new group of displays created automatically. Uh, so we have the com two different combustion overviews, and then we have calculation of mean effective pressures and com a calculation of heat release. Now, if you go to the first screen, uh, we have only the basic data calculated. Uh, this means that we, we see pressure in time domain. Uh, we see pressure calculated in the angle domain, but we don't have any additional outputs. So we need to go back and then also activate some outputs to be displayed. Uh, we can just activate all the current values from uh, all the pressure values, uh, maximum pressure, compression curve, uh, thermodynamics, knocking, and so on. And if you go back, we can just right click on the display and rebuild it. Once you, when you rebuild the screen or the default the screen that was created, uh, it will populate all the displays with its default channels that should be there. Uh, so now that we have the actual calculations available, uh, we can see the IMAP values available. We can see the actual uh, maximum pressure. Uh, we can also see the position of maximum pressure, work, power, torque calculation. Uh, so all this is available. And we can, of course, customize the screen with uh, any any of the values that are available. We can, of course, uh, go to design mode, uh, remove some displays at uh, other displays directly and configure it as we would like to have it. So it's always possible to completely customize your screen and uh, even start as a basis with the predefined screens that are available. Okay, so now we will do a short measurement so you can store a few seconds of data and immediately once we stop the measurement and go to analysis uh, we get the last data file that we stored opened and we can analyze it replay it and even do some modifications so in our case we now did a measurement with only a single cylinder being set up 
uh, we can actually go back since we have uh, an eight-cylinder engine and configure this offline. Uh, so we can change here the number of cylinders to eight. And of course, the only condition if we want to do any kind of these modifications or changes is that we have all the analog channels stored. So as long as you have all the analog data stored at full rate, then you can always do any kind of recalculation or adjustment in channel setup. Uh, sorry, in the data file itself. So we can just assign the channels. Go to review, recalculate the data, and we have then available channels from uh, the whole calculation. Uh, of course, we can do this online or we can do this offline. So it's always possible to add uh, additional channels either in the data file or in the measurement itself. So we can. Give one question. Mm -hmm. uh, Primoz, can you talk about data acquisition sample rate required for combustion analyzer? When we need serious high speed slice and when dual core is enough? Of course, that's, that's a good question and something that comes up quite often. So the required sample rate requires mostly on the type of engine that you're using. Uh, we can go back to measurement and I can show you this on an example. So here we are using the file replay option where we have a data with 100 uh, kilohertz sample rate. So let me switch it like this so it's easier to see. So we have 100 kil kilohertz, so about half the sample rate of a DEV43 or the Sirius slice. And if you go to combustion, uh, you can see here what the upper allowed RPM uh, currently is. So, and this depends on two things. One is the analog sample rate, and the other is the required angular solution. So currently we are calculating all the results at one degree angular solution, uh, which is not really something that is uh, mostly used. Mostly uh, customers use 0 0.5, 0 0.2, or 0 0.1 degree. Anything lower, uh, we never really see it, and it's also something that's not really required. So uh, you don't have to you don't have to get a system that will work with 0 0.05 or 0 0.025 degrees unless the customer would explicitly ask for that. But uh, normally 0 0.1 degree is the reference for most combustion and analysis calculations. And you can see here that now that I change it to 0 0.1 degree, my upper frequency also uh, reduced by a factor of 10. So now I can only measure engines that go well, valid, validly measure engines that go up to 1,700 RPM. Uh, of course, if I would have the, the full sample rate of a standard series slice that has 200 kilo samples per second, this would be twice as much, so 3,300 RPM. So that's, that's the maximum RPM with 0 0.1 degree. If a customer is okay with 0 0.2 degrees, then he can go up to 6,600 uh, RPM with a standard slice. If he needs to have 0 0.1 degree resolution, then he needs a high speed slice. So normally what we recommend is that uh, if a customer is doing combustion on a slow diesel engine, that they can use the standard slice. If they do combustion on a gasoline engine, normally they need a high speed slice. There is also one difference that uh, I will show you when we get uh, back to the actual presentation. Uh, after this demo is the analog inputs or the filters on the analog inputs. So the high speed slice or the charge input on the high speed slice can, uh, has slightly different filters, uh, but it's mostly related to the requirements of the gasoline engines that are uh, usually a higher RPM. Okay, so here I'll just uh, make a basic overview of the other features and we'll also take a look at this in the presentation. 
so you can see that the combustion analyzer module is really easy to set up. You need just a few basic inputs and then all the results are available with a click of a button. So you have all the current values available. You can activate running averages uh, with a certain amount of cycles. Uh, you can also uh, activate overall average, cylinder average or engine averages. And then all the outputs can be uh, set up here in one place. Uh, so it depends what kind of outputs you need. And uh, usually the customer will know exactly what kind of calculations they need and what kind of thresholds you, they need to have. So even uh, if you do a demo for them and they want you to show how thermodynamics is calculated, they will know all the parameters and the thresholds. Uh, so there was another question from Yunos. Uh, with the same sensor, can resolution increase by software or to increase resolution, do we have to use sensor which has high pulse minimum? Uh, so this is probably related to the angle sensor. We do uh, recalculation or resampling of any sensor type. So a 60 minus 2 sensor uh, only has uh, normally only has 60 poses each revolution, but we also recalculate it and resample it, and we then uh, get any required angle resolution directly from that sensor. So if you want to have 0 0.1 degree resolution, you don't have to have an encoder with 3,600 poses. You can actually use uh, a 60 minus 2 sensor or uh, a 1,024 uh, pulse encoder, and we just resample uh, the data. Of course, the resampling is, you have two types. It can be linear between the poses, or we can even use filtered. This means that we predict the frequency of rotation and even account for that to have higher accuracy. Although, as far as we, we saw, um, there is no decrease in accuracy in this one. And of course, with our super counter technology, we can really accurately capture any of these small events and uh, accurately calculate uh, what the position is. Okay, so uh, the basic configuration also consists of the engine type. Uh, you can select your two-stroke basic, two-stroke industrial. Uh, industrial means that we have even uh, that we have a different uh, channel type uh, or different settings available. So, sorry about that. Let me just restart the window. So we have different types of configurations available. Uh, the most basic one is either if you have a two-stroke engine or a four-stroke engine. And uh, of course, uh, you need to select your fuel type. From the fuel type, you can then also uh, set if you have a diesel or a gasoline engine. And the difference is in the polytropic coefficients. Uh, if you have different uh, polytropic components needed for combustion or for expansion, uh, you can even set if you have multiple cylinders, you can even set your deactivation source. Uh, so every cylinder can be permanently activated, or it can also be deactivated, uh, or you can also set a cylinder that is deactivated from an analog channel or from a CAN channel. This means that you can read this data from the ECU directly, and uh, when the ECU tells Devasov that the cylinder is deactivated, it can deactivate it automatically. We have a similar function also for the volume source. Uh, so we have an option for variable geometry and uh, it means that uh, we can again read the volume information from the ECU and can switch uh, through different volume geometries if you don't have a fixed volume geometry in the engine. Uh, of course, you can also add additional channels and these additional channels can be any kind of channel that you get over CAN, XCP, Modbus, uh, and these additional channels will be recalculated into the angle domain and then also um, aligned with your cylinder misalignment angle. 
Um, Joao asked if there is a specific setup for gasoline or diesel turbocharged engines. Uh, the only difference between them is that the polytropic coefficient and there is also one difference uh, how how this is usually done is the correction principle so if you use charge type pressure sensors you usually get constant drift of these sensors they only measure good relative pressure uh, but over time they drift to different values so what Devasoft does or any type of software that uh, does combustion an analysis needs to correct uh, this pressure to a known value or some kind of reference each cycle. For turbocharged engines, uh, we usually do this correction from a measured value and we can measure the pressure after the turbocharger and say uh, that uh, at a certain angle, usually when the intake valve is fully opened, uh, the pressure in the cylinder matches the pressure after the turbocharger or we make a math channel from it and uh, reduce it by the volumetric efficiency to be more correct. Uh, so in case of turbocharged engines usually uh, it's more correct to do uh, the zero level correction using the measured value. Of course this is also something that's uh, recommended for naturally aspired engines but uh, normally if you will change here the fuel type uh, from gasoline or gasoline direct injection the only thing that will be different is the suggestion for the polytropic coefficient uh, between the gasoline and diesel the difference is in the calculation also uh, in the start and end of combustion uh, since we have there are different points uh, defined by the standard for the diesel and gasoline engines uh, but normally all other uh, configurations or inputs will be the same. Uh, the difference between, also maybe between gasoline and diesel will be then uh, the result definition. So normally for uh, gasoline engines, you will use also the knocking output or knocking detection. For the diesel engines, uh, you will add also the combustion noise calculation so that you can calculate the exact noise that the engine would produce before the exhaust. Okay, so for analog inputs, as already mentioned before, uh, we have direct charge type input possible. The serious slice, uh, either the standard or the high speed, both have direct charge type uh, pressure sensor inputs. And there is a big advantage in using these directly or connecting sensors directly to uh, Devasoft amplifiers than using external amplifiers. Um, the problem with external amplifiers, especially those that are in line on the cable, is that you have always some sort of filtering already implemented inside. And that's basically like a black box. So it filters the signal and it can also cause some uh, phase delay. And especially if you're doing knocking detection, it can filter out some frequencies that would normally uh, be used to detect any knocking events. Um, if any filtering is actually needed, uh, there is also, we also have two different types of filters available in Devasoft. So the, most, the ones that are most commonly used are analog filters directly on the amplifiers. And we also have digital filters available in the software. So either IIR or FIR filters. Uh, and especially with the analog filters, uh, there should be a lot of consideration taken uh, if you use high pass or low pass filtering, as you can see on the right side on the top uh, chart. If you would use a high pass filter of, for example, one hertz, at 1000 RPM, you would have about 15% uh, of error on IMAP only because you would have such a big phase delay. Uh, so you need to be careful to really select a filter um, below 0.1 Hertz or even lower. Uh, and the same thing goes if you uh, set low pass filters and for example, use a filter of 
one kilohertz, then you would again have about 13% error in IMAP at 1000 RPM. And the higher you would go with RPM, the higher your error would also be. So in that case, we would we recommend using filters above 30 kilohertz. And for high pass filters, we also recommend going below 0 0.07 uh, hertz. And that's also the lowest filter possible on a direct uh, charge input on a standard serial slice or the DV43 with DSI charge adapters. If you use the high speed uh, serial slice with charge inputs, then you can even set the high pass filter at 0 0.01 hertz. Uh, one huge benefit of using DevSoft is that we really are not limited to the amount of analog inputs that are possible as some competition uh, of ours is. So here you can just uh, stack the slices together or even by bigger systems or additionally later add additional channels. The combustion analyzer software um, it can also run multiple combustion analyzers or uh, even run engines at 32 cylinders if some customer would have it. So as mentioned, some other features are we have uh, already cylinder deactivation activ uh, available in the software. So each cylinder can be uh, deactivated separately. And uh, one nice thing here is that if you have an eight cylinder engine and one pressure cylinder, uh, one pressure sensor fails, instead of changing the setup or removing the sensor, you can just set that cylinder to deactivate it and all the results will be ignored from the average uh, calculations. So you don't have to change the setup, you can just set it to unused and continue with the measurement. And of course, this is even something that, is, that can be done in the data file later. So if a whole series of measurements is done, they don't have to repeat it, they can just uh, set it to deactivate it, recalculate the data and continue like that. Uh, as mentioned before, we also have different types of zero level correction, um, either thermodynamic, uh, fixed value or measured value, uh, as mentioned before, where you can measure the pressure after a turbocharger or at the inlet and then uh, correct it to, uh, to that value at a certain crank angle. We have also uh, two polytropic coefficient uh, definitions. So this defines the burn rates uh, and also, yeah, basically the, the, the burn rates and the calculation for the thermodynamics. So we have two separate polytropic coefficient, one that is used for compression and the other one that is used for combustion. And we also have this available as an output. So if you are using an engine that has dual fuel type, for example, a diesel and gas engine, uh, by using the polytropic output, uh, you can actually override the manual coefficients and can tell Devasoft to automatically calculate it and input it. So when you run the engine on diesel, it will have a different uh, polytropic coefficient than once it's running on gas. And if you override it or um, set up Devasoft to calculate it automatically, you can actually run a continuous measurement without changing the setup, even when you switch from one fuel to the other. Uh, the module is also prepared for variable compression ratio engines, so we can input different volume curves and then switch between them uh, based on data from the ECU directly. Uh, there are mul multiple combustion analyzers available. Uh, this is, for example, useful if you would be doing uh, combustion analysis on a compressor, uh, where you have a multi-stage compressor and have different kinds of geometries you can then uh, define each cylinder uh, with its own combustion analyzer. Uh, and as you saw before, we have all the outputs at a single place uh, that you can just select with a click of a button. So you don't have to input any formulas, but if you want to do any calculations, you can of course uh, add statistics, uh, you can add uh, math formulas, or you can even write C++ scripts for doing some calculations later. Uh, we output instantaneous results, running averages, overall average, uh, cylinder, current cylinder values, or cylinder averages. And one thing that is also new with the upcoming release is that we have event detection now on additional channels. So before each cylinder could have one um, angle detection event, and this was usually used 
to detect the start and end angle of injection or ignition, um, either if it was a gasoline or a diesel engine. And the problem was uh, that uh, if you have a gasoline engine where you have a spark plug and an injector uh, on the same cylinder or even multiple spark plugs, you wouldn't be able to do it with a classic setup. Uh, so now we change this to additional channels. So you can um, add additional channels for one spark plug, the second spark plug, the injector, and all of them, on all of them, you can then detect what the starting angle and what the ending angle is based on the voltages here. And one really nice feature here is that, um, whereas before you needed to have uh, eight inputs if you wanted to detect eight injectors, you can now actually use a single input since we have a multiplexing uh, function available. So uh, you can take all eight cables uh, and then uh, run a single current clamp around all of them. So we will basically just add all the signals together and then you can define some uh, gap. So for example, uh, we can say that from minus 10 to minus 30 degree. Uh, this is in the range that we expect the first um, injection signal. And uh, basically combustion analyzer will then uh, cut away all the data and only look for that signal in that area. Um, so basically you can put all the signals together and then using uh, this windowing function um, on, only take a part of the area where you expect the signal and ignore everything else. And we also have now a lot of uh, other standard outputs available. For example, the duration of, of the event in time, not only in angle, and also the number of events and the total time. And one really big update that we did and is, will be available with the upcoming release is a new knocking algorithm. Uh, so this is uh, now similar to the knocking algorithm that AVL uses, uh, but we do the calculation also in time domains, so we can even filter uh, the events a bit better. And one thing that is different uh, at Divisoft is that we can also output the actual knocking curve and the actual knocking signal, uh, whereas the competition software only outputs uh, the values of the knocking signal. So this is basically your pressure or how much the pressure uh, deviates uh, once it starts knocking from the actual pressure signal. Here in our case, you can see that uh, we can display the actual pressure curve that is measured. We can also output the pressure curve without the knocking signal. And we can also output the exact knocking signal. So you can see at which angle it's knocking the most, what's the shape of the knocking signal and uh, where you need to do some adjustments. So we uh, can also send uh, combustion data to other systems, either by using CAN or XCP. Um, XCP is something that we have also recently added and it's available as a plugin in Devisoft. So this means that all channels that are available can be sent over XCP to other systems. Uh, we can generate the 812 file uh, define the channel list, and then uh, all uh, third-party masters are compatible with Devisoft. Uh, for example, we have full support for ETAS Inca, Vector Canapé, or ATI Vision. And this also reduces the complexity of the system a lot because in the past you needed to use uh, a CAN output on Devisoft and then CAN input on the other system to send the data. And of course, you could send uh, less data and uh, you also had uh, more latency uh, problems and delay in between. Here with XCP, you can send much more data faster and synchronous. Uh, same thing goes also for CAN. Um, you can define the channel list in Devasoft and then send data through CAN, create a DBC file, import it on the other system and get the data uh, immediately. Another option, if you want to send data from Devisoft to another system, is using the testbed plugin. So the previous method that uh, I explained, XCP and CAN, is used mostly in uh, vehicle. Uh, testbed plugin is used mostly on testbeds. Uh, so we have a dedicated plugin in software to handle testbed uh, communication. 
and it serves two purposes. One is to send data to the testbed controller, and in the same way, it can also receive controls uh, from the testbed, so Devisoft can work completely in a slave mode. Uh, you can just set up the setup, save it, and then you can do everything remotely from testbed. So Devisoft can know when to start storing, when to export data, and it can even export it to iFile or any other compatible format. Uh, one important feature of Devasoft is that we can combine combustion analyzer with other modules. Here you can see a nice example of combustion uh, being coupled together with power analysis, and we have a really powerful hybrid engine analyzer. So we did here a measurement of a complete hybrid powertrain, DC analysis of the battery, AC analysis of the electric motor, coupled together with uh, combustion analysis, and then we can even analyze uh, currents power uh, in the angle domain of combustion analysis. And here we even measured uh, noise on, on the exhaust in acceleration. And if we can even put noise in the same angle domain together with uh, the pressure signal. And we can nicely see uh, when we have some uh, high noise events, for example, when the exhaust valve opens and we have the exact actual noise cycle. Uh, we also have other examples uh, how combustion can be coupled with torsional vibration for shaft rotational analysis if you just add a single or one additional angle sensor on the other side of the crankshaft. If you add a accelerometer with the measurement, you can do vibration analysis uh, and order, order tracking. Uh, with the microphone, you can easily do sound power analysis. And as you can see here on the video, we can even record synchronized high-speed video and uh, record combustion inside a cylinder. So to conclude, I would just like to sum up that, uh, as you saw, we have support for all different sensor types. Of course, it's always recommended if it's possible to use uh, a charge type input directly on a serial slice. The software is extremely to use and it will guide you uh, what you need to set up or which inputs are missing. Uh, the hardware that we have is extremely portable and flexible, so a single serial slice can easily fit in the backpack and engineers can take it on the field or uh, on missions if they have to go uh, do service on ships or uh, remote locations. Uh, and we also have synchronized acquisition from multiple source sources, so either CAN, XCP, CCP, and you always have online pro training help available whenever you get stuck. So here I would thank you for your attention and uh, we are still available for any questions that, that you have.